Tonight on Panorama, the struggle to afford a home. If you have to sell it, you have to sell it. That's, I mean, that's mm. tough, isn't it, too? To... Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's been quite hard. Rising mortgage rates and rents are hitting homeowners and tenants hard. There was noise coming from the hole. That's when I got my phone out and I started to record. Wow! Millions are trapped in miserable conditions. I could put arm to arm near enough to the walls, you know? That's how small it is. And more families are being forced out. What does that do to the children? That's not fair to make them jump from all those places. But could that happen? Could you live like that? No. Why should they have to live like that when their parents work? It's not fair. A house isn't just bricks and mortar. It's a home, somewhere to build a life. This is the front room, living room. Well, the kids obviously spent lots of time in here. This is Vicky. She's a midwife who can't afford to keep the family home. Christmas tree always goes well, so there. The Christmas tree would go here, would yeah, it? it? Yeah, it always goes there, yeah. And I have quite a big one, so, because we've got quite tall ceilings. So 24 years of Christmas trees there. Yeah, yeah, it's always there, yeah. So this is the hall, I mean... Um... Vicky has worked for the NHS for 14 years. She brought up her two boys in this home in the London suburbs. They've now grown up, but they still live at home. Your lads, they were kids at that table, and now they're sort and of... And now they're adults men. at that table, yeah. yeah. It's been a good house for us. And then out the back here, yeah. we've got this lovely garden. Vicky loves the house. She's on a tracker mortgage, so it goes up or down with interest rates. The kids spent lots of, like when they were little in the, in the summer and stuff, we used to have a big swing and a slide and a trampoline and a swimming pool. The £320,000 mortgage is interest only. This year, Vicky's payments have risen from £300 to £850 a month, so she's decided to sell. Now, obviously, the interest rates are starting to creep up again. It's gone up quite a lot, so I need to sell it because otherwise I'm going to end up paying probably £1,000 on interest. If it keeps going up more, then I can't afford it. Been really stressful trying to find things. Can I do it that way? Can I do it that way? Can I do it that way? Can I, you know? But that is stressful because they're big decisions. No, it's aren't been they? really stressful. It's been I've had sleepless nights and stuff like that, worrying about it. So you saw the interest rate rise and it started to physically affect yeah. you. Yeah, it's terrifying actually. And I have a good job. I work hard, but even having that salary, it still can put me in that situation. How's that affected you? Oh, it's made me really emotional. Sometimes it just, I just get emotional for no reason. I didn't really want to sell it, but, you know, you get to a stage where you have to, you, you have to, if you have to sell it, you have to sell it. That's, I mean, that's mm. tough, isn't it, too? To... Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's been quite hard. Interest rates have been increased this year to try to control inflation putting pressure on the UK's already creaking housing market. September's mini-budget pushed it deeper into crisis. This year, fixed-rate mortgages have gone up from 2 to 6%. It's not solely the people at the very bottom end of that kind of housing system now who are struggling but also increasing numbers of people who may have previously regarded themselves as quite secure and comfortable, who are now really struggling financially to meet their housing costs. Housing touches everything. It is so important to our society and our economy. You know, the number of families that haven't formed because people are unable to leave home 
and move in with a loved one and you know for the people who don't see housing as important I, I, I would say just look around it's absolutely fundamental to to our, our, our economy and our society. It's not just buying the rental market is under pressure as well. Rents were already rising because of a shortage of homes. Higher mortgage costs are pushing them up further. Some of the landlords that we've spoken to have interest-only mortgages, so they're seeing their mortgage payments increase and they're going to think about where, how they're going to meet that payment. And those are the landlords that are starting to think about how they might pass those costs on in increasing the rent. This is Nonny. She's a nurse facing eviction. She and her partner have four school-age kids. They've lived in this Bristol house for 10 years and pay £950 a month rent. But the landlord says that's far below the market rate and the house needs to be renovated. So the landlord's issued a Section 21 eviction notice. No fault, no blame, just a date to get out. December the 15th. It's crushed your world. You, you just think, what are you meant to do? We've got four children. We, how do we find somewhere in eight weeks? It's just not long enough to emotionally get your head around the fact that you have to find somewhere to then try and then look for somewhere alongside working and managing the children. And then how do you financially find that money to do it? Nonny and her partner, Apollo, both work full time. She's a ward manager in the NHS and he works nights in a warehouse. Despite earning £60,000 a year between them, they say they can't afford another place like this. It's £1,800 a month for a three bedroom house in Bristol. You know, that's, that's the majority of my wages, that's all of it. My aim in life is to put a safe roof over my children's head. I've worked really hard to earn money to be able to ensure that my children are safe. I wanted to be able to provide for them. And now, even though I'm doing those things, I still can't provide for them. I can't maintain their safety. They are looking at being homeless. Is that what you think might happen? Yeah, because we don't have any option. Nonny's family isn't alone. Like her, 20,000 households faced homelessness after receiving a Section 21 eviction notice in England last year. Evictions went down during the pandemic, but now they are rising sharply. The number of renters forced out by their landlords has more than doubled in the past year. There is widespread fear amongst tenants that they can be evicted through a Section 21 notice, through no fault of their own, I feel sad, to be honest. I, I think that the, the, the housing system is dysfunctional. It creates poverty for people. And lots of people live in very vulnerable situations. And sadly, I think the numbers of people living in those situations is only going to increase. Once you're out, it can be hard finding a new place to live. The high cost of buying a home means more people are renting. Here in Leeds, rents have risen 10% in the past year. Which property was it, sorry? Yep, yeah, is that the two bed at 850 a month, is it? Yeah, that's it's Yeah, fantastic. And can I just ask who's going to be living at the property? There can be dozens of people competing when new rental properties come on the market. More often than not, we do block viewings, so we'll go to a property and we'll show six people, six different people round. We do cap the viewings at sort of six, six to eight per day. Uh, otherwise it just gets, it gets too much. You're showing 20 people around the property and only one person can take it. Yeah, of course. Does 2.30 work for you? Some people coming for viewings are desperate. It's so busy at the minute. We're seeing rents increase. As the demand keeps getting higher and higher, we're seeing those rents increase. 
We've seen tenants being priced out of the market and uh, what we've seen actually is uh, a huge increase in tenants wanting room shares because the pricing is a bit more affordable for them. There is a darker side to the housing market. When tenants are desperate, landlords might cut corners. This is Georgina. She's living in a flat that's falling apart. Here we go. Oh, wow. Immediately see it. Wow. Um, a massive chunk of the ceiling just come down. Yes. The 27 year old graphic designer has been living here in Birmingham for two years. It was about a month after I moved in. Um, I was in bed and I could hear the rain, and I thought it sounded really nice and really loud. Then I realised that was because the rain was inside. Georgina fixed the first hole with tape last year. Her repairs held firm until the middle of the night two months ago. There was noise coming from the hole, which is a sentence I never thought I'd say. And then I started to hear cracks. Um, and at that point, when I heard the cracks, um, that's when I got my phone out and I started to record. Wow! Oh my God! That is extraordinary. She pays £580 a month for the flat. It's now effectively a bedsit. She can only use the lounge. What's been the worst bit? The fact now that it's, it's damp, it, it's cold and I don't want to heat th like when there's just cold air coming out of this this hole so I'm you know layering up but because I'm don't want to put my heating on my stuff's going moldy like it's really damp Georgina's landlords are renovating the top floor they say they want to fix Georgina's flat but no one answered the door when they called. Georgina says she's asked them to fix the ceiling and they haven't. You could potentially face a winter here. Yes, yes, yeah. What's that prospect like? Um, I think, <laughs> I think I, right now I'm just living in my living room. I think that's what I do. I think I shut that door and I focus on heating where I am, which isn't really much of a life, is it? <laughs> The figures generally show about a third of the private rented sector is in disrepair. Some of the demand is pushing downwards into what I would call the shadow part of the private rented sector. So we might see some landlords with not very good quality properties at all also able to find tenants because tenants are getting a bit desperate in terms of where they need to be. In London, midwife Vicky has put her family home on the market. Oh, hi, hi Vicky. Hi. hi. Yeah, very good. Thanks for, thanks for coming in. It's a lovely house. It's got bags of accommodation. What we've got to bear in mind is that the market has slowed down. Yeah, I did think that as well. In terms of quite where the market will, will be going, I think we might see prices slipping back a little. She's going to use the money from her house sale to buy somewhere smaller and cheaper. I don't want to get to a stage where I, the interest rates are so high I can't afford my mortgage and then mm. I lose my house. I think that's a massive worry for an awful lot of people. Yeah. In terms of timing as to how long it's going to take to yeah. sell, it's, it's really a crystal ball job. We just have to be patient. Yes. I need people to come to my house to sell it, but you can't, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make it drink, can you? So, yeah. So how do you view the next three months then after what he's just said? Yeah, I think it'd be quiet for the next couple of months and then hopefully after Christmas, it will start to pick up. Vicky hopes she can escape her own personal housing crisis. And around the UK, millions of families are facing difficult choices. More than 60% of respondents to a poll for the BBC last month 
said they expect it will be difficult to pay housing costs this winter. I think there are multiple housing crises within the system, and I think it has got worse over time. Housing is now significantly more expensive relative to earnings, and that creates all sorts of problems for households in choosing and deciding where to live. We think there needs to be a cross-party commitment to building that new generation of homes that are affordable for people on below average incomes um, to live on. We saw the, you know, the national living wage become um, something that both parties got around after it was introduced in the late 1990s. We think there needs to be similarly a commitment to providing living homes set at a rent that people can afford. In Bristol, it's an important day for Nonny. The NHS nurse and her family face being evicted 10 days before Christmas. So she's come to the council for help. So how important is this meeting? Like, so important. I don't have any other option apart from this. So registering for social housing is the only option we've got. What does it feel like being here? It's so scary. It's because it, because this is our only option, it's terrifying. Because if I walk out of here now and they say, sorry, you don't meet the criteria, what do I do? I, I don't have another solution at all. So this is a big hour coming yeah, up? Yeah, it's huge. It's huge. She's in the office for 40 minutes. These are crucial moments for Nonny and her family. How did that go? Terrible. We're not entitled to social housing because of our annual income. What was the moment like when it dawned on you that there was nothing for you? It's devastating because what am I meant to do? So she talked about um, temporary accommodation so that essentially we'll never be homeless if we got to the point where we were, the bailiffs came and we had to leave. You she could, said that then? Yeah, you could come here and they would be housed in temporary accommodation but she says that we would need a three bedroom for the children. We wouldn't be able to get that so we would be in a two bedroom and then you would then move to another place so you could move around for three times before you find somewhere so what does that do to the children that's not fair to make them jump from all those places could, could that happen could you live like that no why should they have to live like that when their parents work it's not fair it's not fair Councils everywhere are struggling to house homeless families. In England, they're spending £1.4 billion a year on temporary accommodation. People are adjusting to cost of living pressures and it's making life very difficult for people. But there's 120,000 children going to sleep in temporary accommodation tonight. You know, that has to be the priority. Social housing used to be the safety net. But 1.4 million social homes have been lost in England alone over the past 40 years. The country's only building around 150,000 homes of all types a year, less than half what the government says we need. And that puts even more pressure on the private rental market. Those people who would want to own are now having to privately rent because they've got no other option. At the same time, we've also got people who might prefer or should really be in social housing because it's a lower rent. So that's why everyone is looking towards the private rented sector at the minute, because those two other bits of the housing market just aren't working. It's Georgina. I was just wondering if uh, you got my email on Friday about my flat issue with the ceiling. Georgina still hasn't had that hole in the ceiling mended. She's ringing the local council. The ceiling it is bowing and cracking in other places. Um, because of, with that in, con in consideration, would it be considered this kind of flat at the minute safe? The council tell her they won't come to inspect the ceiling because she's already decided to move out. Thank you for answering all my many questions. She's found a new place. I'm going to move. Uh, tenancy agreement is, is signed. And the only like way I've been able to move is because 
Um, I borrowed money off of family members, off my mum. I've lived like this for two months, 60 days, of a hole in my ceiling. Now there's mould, so there's that to contend with as well. I'm going to move to this new place, and I'm going to be opening boxes, praying that my, my things haven't gone mouldy. So what's your situation then, please? How can we help? The housing charity Shelter is getting a 1,000 calls a day from people looking for help. So there is a Section 21 as well. Good afternoon. You're through to Nadeem at Shelter. And have you got any food in the house? A bag of rice. One bag of rice and that's it? You've got nothing else at home whatsoever? No. Are you behind with your rent at all? A bit, yeah, a little bit. A shelter survey suggests rents have risen for nearly a third of private tenants in the past three months, and that one in three have borrowed money to pay the rent. Is that a court order? Things are getting worse, and the people that you talk to, you can hear the desperation in their voices. You know, you can hear the worrying in their voices. You know, people are, are kind of having to make the start choices between do we, you know, can we afford to pay our rent, do we pay for food? I've not come across anything like this before, if I'm honest. Life can be very grim at the bottom of the housing ladder. An inquest was shown shocking pictures from inside a housing association flat in Rochdale. The coroner concluded that two-year-old Awab Ishak died because of prolonged exposure to mould. One point six million people in England are living in dangerously low-quality homes. It's the smallest room. Well, you could I could put arm to arm near enough to the walls. Michael lives in this tiny, run-down bedsit in South London. He's been here for five years. One bed, one chair, and a broken toilet. We look down there, yeah, it's completely moulded off. Got little perfume things just to get the, the smell of the damp away, you know? That's, the, that's for definite, because every time I come here, you know, all I can smell is the damp. The landlord says there's no damp and there aren't any issues with the flat. Yeah. Hi. Hello, mate. How are you? Yeah. Peter, from, right. Peter from Lewisham Council. Right. Nice to see you. Are we yeah. OK to go in and, yeah. and, in, and have an inspection in your room? Yep, yeah, come in. OK, so the issues here are the damp in the corner. Yeah, damp in the corner. And that's coming from the outside, are we, yeah, are we assuming? Yeah, outside walls and the damp in that far corner. Lovely. Because you can actually feel it. So we've got dr open drain. We've got broken guttering. So everything's just going to come straight off and not being taken away. Yep. So it's just yep. going to hit here. Yeah. And that's obviously where it's coming through. We are going to need to uh, liaise very closely with the landlords and hopefully we can engage with them and they're going to engage with us and, and we can get it get, get some fix. Um, the property needs... He can't live like that any further. You're restricted to a one, like an alleyway. It's like an alley, living in an alley, but yeah, and it ain't good. So the price for what you're paying for is not, it's not worth the money, you know? The rent is a staggering £880 a month. That's more than the UK's average mortgage. It's all paid from housing benefit. You're paying for something that's it's not even livable. It's like being in a cell, in a police cell, if you wanted to know. 
The failure to invest sensibly in housing over many, many years, several decades now, has led us to a position where we're paying lots of money in uh, housing benefit expenditure every year. So that's gone to about £30 billion now. About £8 billion or so on average over the last 10 years we've been paying into the private rented sector. And we, we just don't get much bang for buck there. The government says it's committed to delivering 300,000 homes a year in England. It's capping rent increases in social housing and will legislate to allow private renters to challenge unjustified rent increases. One thing is clear, surviving the UK's housing market is getting tougher, whether renting or buying, millions of people face a bleak winter. Georgina is finally leaving her flat. She will be paying an extra £170 a month at her new place. Yeah, definitely looking forward to just putting it behind me and a fresh start, really. Like, like at a cost, it, it's more like a lot more expensive, but um, it's kind of the nature of the market at the minute. Vicky, the NHS midwife, is hoping her house sells before her mortgage rises any further. I accept it now, but I was annoyed at first. I'd like to keep the house, but I'm not in a situation where I can, so I don't really think about that. My life's easy here, and it won't be when I move. But then, you know, I'll, I'll adapt, and I'll, I'll make my life as easy as possible when I move. And NHS nurse Nonny, who's being evicted, hasn't found anywhere else to live. She's packing up the family home, but has nowhere to go. The boys were two when we moved in. My oldest was four, so they don't remember being anywhere else. So it's, the thought of it must be to them is really hard. I feel like you failed now, because I can't do that. Not from a fault of my own, I've done nothing wrong, but it's, it's gone, I can't do it. Can't keep them safe with a roof, despite trying. After we filmed, the landlord agreed they could stay for an extra month, but the family is still losing their home. Four households struggling. Their experiences are shared by millions. As the UK faces a winter of worry, many can no longer afford a decent home.